Just like we promised, we're back here. It's time to uh, talk about the uh, BAFTA winners here today, who we think is going to win BAFTA. Um, yeah, so I kind of looked over a few things here real quick before we uh, made our uh, made my choices and stuff, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I feel like I've maybe got one film maybe a little overbalanced, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to start here with the... Um, uh, let's see, where do we want to start here? I've got these. These are in a different order than I'm used to. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll go with the um, uh, visual effects category first here. Um, anyway, so um, I think uh, to start out here, I think the creator is going to win this one. Uh, this could be, you know, the first uh, chance that we get to see that win. Um, we'll see about the Visual Effects Society. They've yet to cast their vote, so we'll... Um, Kind of see what they come up with, too, for some of these. Uh, the creator, if I'm not mistaken, is in supporting visual effects. Um, yeah, I'll have to look that up, see where... Because I, I don't think Godzilla was in, like, main effects or something like that. Um, I guess I can try to find it here. But um, anyways, uh, it'll be interesting because I know it's kind of a, a two-way race right now between those two um, for who's going to win visual effects at the Oscars. But... Um, yeah, let's see where the Visual Effects Guild ended up giving them. Uh, they they hand their awards out actually a week from yesterday, so they're still um, coming up on it. Oh, the creators in uh, actually effects driven film. Okay, that's that's what it was. Um, I thought Godzilla got in, but I'm not seeing it listed here, so maybe it didn't. Okay, I could have sworn it got in, but no. Um, but yeah, creators in effects driven, and um, yeah, since Oppenheimer is nominated there, and so far. I think the, the the guilds, for the most part, I think they're going to try to give Oppenheimer as much as they can, um, frankly speaking, but um, we'll see. Anyways, but here I've got the, the creator winning. Uh, let's see, next up would be the uh, sound category. This is also, I think, uh, a spot where um, uh, I, I've got it pretty well. I think I've got Oppenheimer pretty easily here. Um, I don't really sense a lot of... Uh, a lot of competition from the rest of the uh, nominees there, so we'll go with that one there. Uh, for the makeup and hair category, uh, Maestro, I think, has got this one. Um, I would actually not be too shocked if Poor Things wins here. Um, you know, it is nominated quite a bit over here, even though it is missing, you know, a couple of those uh, key categories, like, you know, Mark Ruffalo didn't get in. Yorgos, for whatever reason, missed over here. So uh, wouldn't be the, the biggest surprise in the world if they actually do go somewhere else for that one. But I've got it for Maestro. Um, and don't forget, Maestro also did get the uh, director nomination, um, got the screenplay nomination and stuff. So it, it's still fairly represented over here. Uh, score, this is Oppenheimer. Yeah, I, I really don't think there's uh, too much crosstalk on that one. It's, it's Oppenheimer. Uh, for the design categories, I'm going to go with Poor Things over Barbie. Actually, in both of these, we'll go ahead and knock them both out. Costume design as well, I've got Poor Things. Because uh, remember, this is the spot, you know, if, if history is repeating itself, this is the spot where the favorite won over Black Panther. Actually, Black Panther, uh, as we recall, only got the visual effects nomination, if um, memory serves, at BAFTA that year. And everywhere else it got skunked. Um, some have argued that's part of the reason why they did they um, that. And then I think the, um, the next year being, again, pretty low representation for... Um, uh, African-American stuff, not only at BAFTA, but just, you know, at the Oscars as well, I think is kind of what drove part of the uh, changes that we saw in uh, 2020. Um, and then that's also when this, uh, the, the balloting stuff started happening over here at BAFTA where they were doing that. But regardless, um, it was the favorite that won in those uh, two categories that year over, um, uh, over here at BAFTA. Um, now, it is worth noting Barbie is nominated in both categories, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, this exact pattern does hold up or not, but uh, I, I, I think poor things. And again, uh, another spot, Barbie, remember, didn't do so well over here. Yes, it got Margot Robbie in, yes, it got Ryan Gosling in, but otherwise it got these two categories, and it got screenplay, and that was it. It didn't get in for film, didn't get in for directing, didn't get um, the rest of the categories there, so... Um, yeah, I don't think I have way too much else to add to that one. So I think, yeah, poor things in both those. Uh, for film editing, Oppenheimer uh, feels like a pretty easy call to me. Same with cinematography, also going to Oppenheimer. Um, yeah, so I think uh, the tech categories, that's what I have at least. Um, I was thinking of like, okay, if, if there was going to be an upset anywhere, probably makeup would be the spot. But since they're already going to get, they're already going to give poor things, I think the two design categories maestro i really don't see again where else they're going to award that one and it did you know arguably overperform over here at bafta 
So, yeah, I, I think they'll at least give it that. But uh, there's room for for them to award it in uh, in more spots, potentially. Maybe the sound category, because it is nominated there. But I, I, in the top categories, I'm really not sensing a huge amount of support right now for Maestro. Uh, the casting category, this one's always kind of a difficult one to call. We're still kind of in the early days of it being a category over here at BAFTA. I'm going to go with the smaller cast here. I'm going to go the holdovers. Um... But really, it could, I mean, realistically, it could be any of the five here. The other ones are Killers of the Flower Moon, All the Strangers, Anatomy of a Fall, and How to Have Sex. But um, I'm thinking the holdovers. It just feels like one of those um, things there where they'll, they'll go with that. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Then we do have the um, uh, a couple of feature categories over here. For uh, foreign film, um, Anatomy of a Fall, I think, is going to win here. Um, it's got the film nomination. Um yeah, I, I think it'll win over the uh, zone of interest. Um, and so far, at a lot of these award shows, if these two have been nominated in the same category, Anatomy of a Fall has been has been winning. So that's another sign of strength there. Uh, for documentary, 20 Days in Maripol seems to have a pretty good uh, handle on it, so I'm going to go with that one. I would not be totally surprised, though, to see a non-Oscar nominee like Beyond Utopia actually win this. And um, we'll see, because some of the voting overlap and everything... Um, uh, is kind of strange here in particular because you look at it, it's like American Symphony, Beyond Utopia, Wham!, and still a Michael J. Fox movie where the other four nominees for documentary here, none of them are at the Oscars. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's really like the biggest strength for 20s and Maripol. It certainly has to be a strength, if not the biggest strength, uh, not just the fact that it has been doing uh, pretty well uh, at the precursors so far. And then for animated feature, I think this is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I don't really sense Boy and the Heron being the upset winner here. It could happen, but, you know, it did happen to the Globes, but I think we explained that away with the uh, the fact that uh, uh, we had never uh, seen... Um, oh, God, I'm forgetting his name. <laughs> um, oh, geez. Um, Kurosawa. No, not Kurosawa. God damn it, I'm an idiot. Um, uh, what the hell is his name? What the hell is his name? Uh, Miyazaki, right? Yeah, as soon as I pull it up, I'm like, yeah, then I pull it. It's been a long day, guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. We'll get into the uh, top categories now. Uh, starting with the screenplay categories. Um, adapted screenplay. Uh, this one is kind of a close call for me. I'm kind of thinking um, at the Oscars, you know, I, I've got American Fiction a lot higher at the Oscars. But here, I don't think it's going to win. Um, this is the only nomination American Fiction got. Um, and as much as it could play spoiler in that category at the Oscars, I don't see BAFTA going that far with it. Um, All of Us Strangers did get, like, a directing nomination and a couple acting nominations. Surprisingly, not for Andrew Scott, though. Um, it could still pull off a, a surprise win here, so I, I'll keep that one as a possibility. But I think the three that I've really got my eye on here are Zone of Interest, Poor Things, and Oppenheimer. Um... And Zone of Interest is the one I'm most worried about. Uh, Poor Things could also win. You know, we did see Tony McNamara win here a couple years ago for the favorite um, in the original category, of course. But I'm thinking, this is where I'm like, okay, I might be a little too top-heavy on this, but I've got Oppenheimer winning. Um, I just feel like, you know, that one, again, overall, it did exactly what we thought it would pretty much here at BAFTA. Um, it didn't disappoint in any categories, aside from maybe visual effects, where it was eligible, but it didn't get in. Um, yeah, I really don't, I really don't think that, um, you know, there's enough around those other two films to get it over it in this category, but I, I could be totally wrong there, but I'm, I'm just gonna go with Oppenheimer there. On the original side, though, I'm, I'm a little more confident in this one. Anatomy of a Fall I have winning this. Again, the international voters, I think, have really liked it. It did win the Screenplay Prize of the Globes, which, again, is not the biggest precursor. It's not the most uh, accurate one uh, for when it comes to Screenplay Prizes. But um, it is a chance to award the film outside of the international feature category or the you know, equivalent here at BAFTA. Um, Barbie could win. The Holdovers could win. Um, yeah, I'd be a little more worried about the Holdovers over here than uh, Barbie, since Holdovers did exceptionally better. But, um, yeah, for the moment, I've got that one winning the casting category, so that's part of the reason why. But, um, yeah. So right now, I've got Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, let's see here. We'll go with the uh, supporting categories next. This is another spot where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, this is one where I want to be a little different. I don't want to go with the crowd here. 
I want to go Emily Blunt here, actually, for supporting actress for Oppenheimer. Um, number one, it's the hometown favorite thing. You know, being from Britain, I think, is really going to help her in this category. Um, and number two, even though Oppenheimer, yes, does have a lot of other awards here, I'm just reminded last year of when we did see both Barry Keegan and uh, uh, Carrie Condon win in their categories, um, uh, you know, being the hometown favorites and everything, even especially like uh, I'm thinking of uh, Kiyu Kwan, who basically had supporting actor locked up at that point, even though he was in, you know, domination mode, they didn't give it to him. They gave it, uh, they gave it to, um, gave it to uh, Barry Keegan. So I'm I'm just thinking like you know what I'll just take a, a gab gamble here and, and put Emily Blunt to win, um, but Divine is is definitely right behind her though. And even though yes the holdovers did do well here, it did get the supporting actor nomination, it got the director nomination that it did not get at the Oscars. I, I again I just feel like I've got to go a little different here, so I'm going Emily Blunt, um, hometown favorite there. Supporting actor, I'm also going with the Oppenheimer candidate here. That's uh, Robert Downey Jr. He is, again, he's in kind of, uh, you know, air, air, uh, airplane mode or whatever at this point. He, he's uh, pretty much got it all locked up. And I, I don't sense enough of uh, competition from, like, Dominic Sessa or Paul Mescal, even though that could happen. Maybe there's a little outskirt of that happening. Or Ryan Gosling, for that uh, matter. Lead actress, um, Emma Stone. Since Lily Gladstone is not nominated here, I think Emma's got a little bit of a clearer path. Um, Sandra Huller could win if the European vote is, str is strong enough and there's just enough support behind that. Don't forget it is up for director and film over here. Um, but that being said, I think Emma, you know, just because she does have a little bit more of a trajectory to win at the Oscars, I think the kind of, you know, trying to predict it kind of factor when it comes to, uh, BAFTA and everything there, I think they will go Emma Stone. Plus it's a play, a, a good spot to award poor things in a bigger category. Uh, then for Best Actor, I'm actually um, not going with a hometown favorite here. I've, I've been kind of saying all along, I think Killian Murphy's going to have an advantage here at BAFTA. I'm actually going for the upset. This is where I'm going to go the holdovers. I'm going Paul Giamatti here. Um, and again, I feel like I talked about it this uh, earlier this week. And afterwards, I did uh, late last night. I looked at it again. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I went, I went ahead and went back. Because actually, uh, I think I told the story at the very beginning of the season. My early prediction, my first prediction for Best Actor was Paul Giamatti. Then I switched to Bradley Cooper. Now I've switched back to Giamatti at the Oscars as well. Um, and again, this is going to be nothing but a, sh a sign of strength for him, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, SAG, even though Holdovers is not in, uh, going to be up for ensemble, I think that's a place they're going to award Paul Giamatti because not only has he worked, you know, with everyone, basically, which is a, a big key at SAG, he's also done some work on the TV side with his show uh, Billions over the last few years. So I think there's enough, you know, support there. He's going to win SAG. And the holdovers doing well enough over here, even though I don't have Divine winning, this is a place where I'm not going with the uh, the hometown favorite. So I'm kind of splitting that vote, if you will, and kind of um, doing it that way. But that's that's where I landed on that. Uh, then for Best Director, yeah, this is Christopher Nolan. Yeah, again, really not much crosstalk on that one. For Best British Film, again, this is a big place to award either The Zone of Interest or Poor Things. Even though Zone of Interest did do really well over here, I actually have it not winning anything. I've got Poor Things winning for British Film. It makes a little more sense because, yes, you do have um, uh, uh, Yorgos. You know, he did win for The Favorite over here, uh, the same category and everything. And we think Poor Things is not going to win Best Picture. You know, it'll win Best Actress and everything. Um, and because I don't have it winning screenplay, I was like, yeah, I think this is the place to award it. And then for best film, I do have Oppenheimer winning here. And again, I don't really sense an upset here. I don't sense them going holdovers. I don't see them going Anatomy of a Fall or Poor Things. And Killers of the Flower Moon, yeah, disappointed in too many categories over here. I don't think it has much of a shot. And then I probably the one category I am the worst at predicting ever, I always get it wrong, is the... Um, Rising Star Award, and I'm going with, um, I, I I see her, because I, I haven't seen the show, but The Bear, uh, it's uh, Ayo uh, Ebiri, I think is, I, I've, I've heard, I haven't heard her name pronounced enough to, to nail it, but um, I've got her winning this. Um, you do have Jacob Elordi, you have uh, uh, Phoebe, uh, I was going to say you got like a couple of people, I'll just name the rest of them just to get it out of the way. Phoebe uh, Denover, or Denevar, I've, I've, again, hers is not a name I've heard a lot. Uh, so, uh, Sophie Wilde and Mia McKenna Bruce being the other uh, rising star ones. These are voted on by the public, by the way. And uh, 
yeah, I'm just going to go Io because of the popularity of the show, and she has done a couple of things. She was supposed to be in one of the Marvel movies or something, but she had to drop out for scheduling conflicts or just the fact that she didn't want to do it, but we'll see. Yeah. Anyways, uh, one thing, though, I do want to make... I, I totally spaced on it. I was going to mention it in the last video as well because we had heard the announcement by then, but the casting category uh, over here at BAFTA, guess what? This is now carrying over, and we're going to have here in a couple of years... Uh, the, I think the 2026 Oscars, so that, I don't know if that, I don't think they specified if that's films coming out in 2026 that are recognized in 2027, or if it's going to be in 2026, meaning films that were released in 2025, but the casting category is coming to the Oscars, and um, yes, I do want to point out too, somebody commented, and, and I thought, oh, that's that's actually a really great point, um, and kind of, you know, you know, in retrospect, I was like, yeah, I was kind of ignorant to that. But, um, the casting category, I think for, uh, for this, uh, uh, and it'll be probably the same at the Oscars, it's not just ensemble. I think that's the first thing a lot of us think of, myself included, but it's also about, as this, uh, uh person pointed out, it's about getting the roles right, about casting to the part, you know, not just grabbing, um, even though like a film like Oppenheimer this year did it extremely well, not just grabbing big stars and saying, here, be in the movie. It's about casting the right people for the role. And, um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, definitely for that part, I would say the holdovers, they did a good job on that. That's part of the reason why I picked it. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, it'll be, it'll be kind of exciting to see how it goes at the Oscars. It'll be a, a brand new category. They'll be back up to 24, um, and there's been, you know, there's been some outcries about what about a stunt uh, ensemble category equivalent like they have it at SAG. Um, you know, we've been arguing about voiceover acting performance not a category for a few years. I've heard some people say go back to the two sound categories. I've heard a couple other descriptions for like, what else do you want to see um, for that? Uh, you know, more changes to the Oscars, more categories and stuff. And um, yeah, I think casting was really at the top of a lot of people's lists for sure. So interesting and uh, exciting to see them do that, and we'll we'll see how it goes down here in a couple of years. And um, yeah, yeah, I think that's really about all I got for now. Um, uh, yeah, we'll see how BAFTA goes. I feel like I, I I I've I've had some very mixed years in the past year at BAFTA. I, I either do really really well, or there's just all sorts of toss up categories that I just pick the wrong side on, and I pick the you know uh, pick the the one that doesn't win. So. Um, I don't know. There's there's a couple toss-up categories, arguably, this year, but uh, yeah. All right, that's all I got for now, so we will uh, be back here. Uh, we'll probably come back sometimes because uh, the awards are on Sunday. Um, I will not be able to watch or do any live reactions or anything, uh, as I've done in previous years for some awards shows. I think that's that's been quite a few years ago now, so I don't think we have to worry about that. But uh, I won't be able to watch live or anything, so I'll, I'll try to catch maybe some of the speeches later on and maybe comment on, th on them before we talk about the winners. But, um, yeah, we'll probably just talk about winners when we, um, when we come back here on Sunday, but, uh, yep. All right. We'll see if they, uh, can clarify anything in some of these, uh, murkier categories too, because there's a couple out there, even though we do think Oppenheimer's on the right track. We know some of the acting categories are pretty solid. Um, there's still a couple interesting categories, so we'll see what BAFTA has to offer.